Hello, welcome back. Welcome to week two of the Rise Pattern class where we're making some pants. So last week I told you all to pre-wash your fabric. Wash it in your washing machine before we cut it. And I've done that. And now uh, the first thing that you're gonna do this week is iron this fabric if you haven't already. And we're going to iron it um, and make a fold. So we're gonna fold it in half into like a long, skinny piece. And when you fold it in half, you're gonna fold it selvage to selvage. And what that means, the selvage is this white part. Do you see where the fabric changes to this white part? And it has information on it sometimes about the print and the pattern or the fabric maker. So I'm gonna match up these two. And really press a crease into the fabric. Okay. And yours might not have a different, um, it might not look any different. The selvage might look the same as the rest of the fabric. So just iron your fabric into one really long piece, fold it in half. Once your fabric's ironed, it's time to cut. In our pattern, it tells us to cut two pant pieces on the fold and one to two pockets, which is a square pattern piece. And the pockets are completely optional. If you don't want your pants to have pockets, you don't need to cut those two or one or two squares. I've laid out my fabric. On this side is the fold, and on that side are the two open sides. And you'll see on the pattern piece itself, it has this line with these two arrows, and it has the word fold on it. So that means that this section, this line, needs to be up against the fold of the fabric, that crease that we made when we ironed. And you can see that I have placed my pattern piece towards the end of the fabric because we're gonna cut this again. So I wanna save up my fabric. So when you're cutting, you can use pins to secure your pattern piece to the fabric or some people will use weights. So just grab anything around your house to uh, weight down the pattern and then cut along. Another couple features about the pattern that you uh, need to pay attention to is this line right here that says grain. This means that you want this line to go with the grain of the fabric. So cotton woven fabrics have two, or have lots of threads, lots of threads going this way and lots of threads going this way. And they're all laced together, woven together. And this is saying that you want this arrow to go in line with the threads that are going this way. And an easy way to tell that your project is in grain is to look at these selvages. And in, you'll see that this line and this selvage line, they're parallel. That means they're going side by side like this. The second feature I want you to notice of um, this pattern is there's these little marks right here. They look like the letter T. They're down there and down here. And I believe that that is telling us where we need to put our pockets later. So I'm going to make a little mark with my chalk, or if you have a pen, um, um, a water soluble pen, or a little bit of a pencil, I'm just gonna make marks right there and right here. 
And that's gonna tell me where my pocket goes later. And I'll do this on the other side once I've cut it as well. Okay, so I'm ready to cut. I've pinned my paper pattern to my fabric. And now I'm gonna go with my scissors and cut along the edge. And we'll just cut around the whole pattern piece. I've cut out this piece and I'm just gonna turn it over and make little lines with my chalk where those T's are. And now you'll do it again. So you'll just slide your fabric down. Make sure that this line is up against the fold of your fabric so that when you open up the pattern piece, to cut again. Now I'm going to cut my pockets. I'm just going to do one pocket on one side of the leg, but you can do two. And in that case, you would just cut two of these squares. And just like before, we want this line that says grain to go parallel with this selvage line. So that looks pretty good. And I'm just going to cut out the square. The next step is to prepare the pockets and prepare the waistband. So if you decided to make a pocket, we're gonna do this, but if you're not gonna use pockets, you can just skip ahead a little bit. But in order to make the pockets, we're going to zigzag stitch all the way around this rectangle we made for our pocket. And then we're going to turn that zigzag like this and iron. But first I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch all the way around. And just a reminder that the zigzag stitch that you see here is letter C. So you'll twist this dial to where the C is right here on your machine. And then when you zigzag, you want to watch and see that your needle goes off and on to the fabric, off, on, off, on. Like that. Now that I've zigzagged all the way around my square pocket, I'm gonna fold up all the edges a quarter of an inch and press them. And notice that I'm pressing towards uh, with, with the uh, wrong side. So here's my right side of my fabric. It's more vibrant. And this is the wrong side. All right, and now you're going to top stitch one of these lawn sides. It doesn't matter which, this one or this one. So when I say top stitch, I mean just a single 
straight stitch down that. That's gonna be the top of the pocket. So you see here, I just stitched a straight seam. I'll go here and there. Sorry. I just stitched a straight seam along one of the long edges of this pocket. Okay. So we'll set that pocket aside for later. And now we're gonna prepare the waistband. So it says on one pants piece, fold the top edge down half an inch toward the wrong side and iron to make a crease. Then we'll fold it down one inch more and iron again. And these are what uh, she's calling memory folds. So um, you'll, the fabric will remember that it's been ironed like that and it'll be easier for us to fold it later to make the waistband. So I've got my pant piece. I'm gonna open it up with the wrong side facing up. And I'm going to fold the top edge down. I'm gonna get at my ruler real quick. So fold the top edge down half an inch. So let's see if this is half an inch. Like this. So we're gonna do a crease here. I'm gonna move that over and do a half an inch all the way across the top of the pant. Okay. And I've made a nice crease with my iron. And now I'm gonna fold this down another inch and iron again. Let's see. Okay. That looks good. Kind of using this to roughly see that I'm at an inch or at a half an inch. Okay? And now you'll do the same exact thing on the other piece. So I'll open it up with the wrong side facing me. I'll fold this down half an inch, looks about right. And iron all the way across. And then fold it down another inch and iron all the way across. So very similar to what we just did. In order to prepare the bottom hem, we'll take each little pant leg and fold it up half an inch, iron it, and then fold it up half an inch again. So we'll do this for each little pant leg. And once again, the wrong side is facing us. I'll fold it up half an inch Kind of check that it's about half an inch, be a little bit less than that. And then I'm gonna fold it up another half an inch. And I'll do this to all my pant legs. So you'll do it four times. All right. We are going to start sewing soon. 
For this project, we are going to use a, um, a method called French seams. And what these do is they encase the raw edge of your fabric um, to make it a little more sturdy. If you do have a serger and you want to do what she calls the traditional method, you can do that. You can kind of go your own way and do that. But I'm going to show you how to do the French seam method. So I'll grab both my pant pieces. And this is kind of counterintuitive. We are going to put them wrong sides together, which is not common. <laughs> Usually, you know, you put the right sides together and sew, but this time we're gonna do the wrong sides. So we're going to open up those creases that we just made at the top of the bottom. We're gonna pin along, here, let's get a better angle. There we go. So I have my wrong sides together and I'm gonna pin along this straight edge right here. And then I'm gonna pin along this curved edge. And remember when you're pinning to unfold those creases that we just made. They're gonna be helpful to us later, but we wanna make sure that they are unfolded right now. All right, so now we're going to sew a seam along this inner curve and on one side of the pant leg. So I'm sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm working on the inner uh, curved piece right now and I know that sewing curves can kind of be a little um, scary but it's a lot like just sewing a straight seam you're just gonna go slowly and just adjust your fabric as you go to make sure you keep that consistent quarter inch seam to do it one-handed. <laughs> so I'm just using my left hand to guide that fabric, kind of twisting it a little bit when I get to this U. it up on me here. There we go. Now the pattern says to carefully trim a little bit of your seam off, your seam allowance off. I'm just gonna do just the tiniest bit. You see where mine has a little bit of overhang here? I'm just going to trip, trim away some of that. But you don't have to um, trim much at all. So I've got my seam here around the U and here. And now we're going to turn it inside out. So like this. And we're going to sew again. I'm gonna make sure this seam is really nice and flat. You could press this. 
what we want to do is into uh, encase that seam we just made, all those raw edges, into a new seam. And it makes the inside look really nice when we do it this way. So I'm gonna do another seam. And what you try to do, it's hard to show you here, you see how um, you have your seam allowance right here? We're gonna try and put all of that seam allowance um, inside our new seam so it's all hidden away. Make a new seam right here. So while you're sewing, you can kind of feel with your fingers to make sure that the seam allowance is inside your new seam. Let's try it. So I'm back at my machine and I've got my old seam allowance inside here. And I'm gonna sew a new seam, keeping all of that inside. So let's see if I can show you. Oops, got unthreaded. I'm going to backstitch when I start and finish each seam. And she says in the pattern, you kind of roll that seam allowance in towards the seam. So I'm just making sure that it's kind of fiddly, but it will give you a really nice result. And I can kind of feel with my fingers where the seam allowance is, and so I want to share my new seam. show you what that looks like when we flip it inside out. So I've made another seam around this long pant leg and now let's see if it's worked. I'm going to turn it inside out and you see how nice that looks on the inside? And there's the outside and we've encased all that. See, okay, some of it's poking out here. Can you see? Not a huge deal. If you want, if you want to be perfect, you can go back and undo the seam and try again. But I'm just going to snip off that little bit. And it's just fine. <laughs> okay, so now you're going to do that same thing on that inside, you. So we're going to turn it inside out and do another seam encasing that seam allowance from before. Now I'm getting ready to attach the pockets. And I am just real quick ironing this seam nice and flat so that it's easy to attach my pocket. Like this. I've got a real nice crease here. 
Now I've got my pocket here, my little square, and I'm gonna fold it in half. But first I'm going to go over these little hems we made just because it's a little bit cooled and come apart. So I'm gonna repress that. Now I'm going to fold it in half and iron it. Get a nice crease on that fold. And what I'm gonna do is line up. This is the top where you did that top stitch. You can see the top stitch we did before. So I'm gonna put it on the fold of my pant like that. That's where I'm gonna put my pocket. It's kind of hard to see. And if yours is like mine, where the pattern is really bold on the print, you can try and see if you can match the pattern like that. See how it kind of disappears? But you don't have to do it that way. Now I'm going to pin it. And be careful that when you're pinning, you're only getting I'm sticking my hand in the top here because I don't want to sew my pocket closed through the whole pant because that would not be a functioning pocket. So I've got my fingers underneath here, feeling, making sure that I'm not going all the way through with my pen. And I'm just gonna pin it all the way around. Now we'll take it to our machine and we'll sew along the edge here. I've opened up my pant like this. It's kind of hard to tell because you're so close, but I don't want to accidentally sew my pocket um, to catch my fabric. So when I'm sewing, got it like this. I'm just gonna go all the way around. And remember, you don't wanna sew up this top part, so you're just gonna sew up the three sides. I'm moving my fabric over so I don't accidentally catch it. to my needle is down but if it wasn't I could use sorry the hand crank on the side to turn my needle down lift up the foot and pivot the whole project and then I'm gonna go the other direction down the bottom of my pocket it's a lot of bulk under the machine sorry about that y'all With my hands, I'm just making sure that I don't have any extra fabric up underneath my needle. Make sure my foot's down. And I'll go along the bottom. And this is why the pocket is totally optional because it's a little bit fiddly. So if you're like, uh, this is too much, I have no idea what's happening, then hey, you know what? You're kind of your kid's pocket anyways. They just hand you everything. They don't really need pockets themselves. So it's not a big deal. So this is where we'll end today. 
you've got your pocket. So in here, like this, for treasures. And next week, we'll finish sewing up this side seam. We'll hem the pants and we'll learn how to put in the elastic at the top. Y'all are doing so great. This week we did some more fiddly things, some kind of tedious or um, irritating things when learning how to do our French seams that look so nice on the inside and on the outside. So don't worry if you need to go and take a walk after this, if you're feeling a little stressed, you're doing great. Things just take practice. I still need practice. This is a good thing for me to learn how to make as well. And don't forget, I'm right here for you. If you have questions, need me to make an additional video to show you how to do something or uh, anything at all, just add it to the group message on Viber and I'll be quick to respond. I hope y'all have a great week. Bye.